Hey everybody, Joe here and welcome back to another video. So a couple of days ago I went to the Bristol uh, car boot sale and it's usually quite a good car boot sale for me. I usually find quite a lot of good stuff. So I went with my partner and we went on a little hunt. We split up to see what we could find. Uh, but actually it was quite disappointing. Nearly disappointing until I found my favourite thing of the day. One of my favourite finds at a car boot sale. So I just run through some of the stuff I found and what kind of things, prices I'm going to ask for, that sort of stuff as usual. So there was a lady selling um, some Beano and Beano uh, comic books. So most Beano comics are worth nothing. Uh, so when I was going through them, I found this. Um, the reason why I found I bought this basically was because um, I do like to read the Beano. I'm still a bit of a Beano fan. But it's part of a deal. If you buy multiple um, comics, you get them for basically three comics for a pound. There was one guy going through them, and so, so originally I passed up on these comics, and the one guy was going through them, and he was putting out really cool um, visionaries, and uh, I think it's like Transformers, those are really cool 80s comics which were underneath, and I didn't notice it, and I was gutted. But he left some scraps for me as well, he was actually quite a nice guy actually. So I paid £2 for all of these, so it was a, that be no one there. This issue of Warlord, I do like war comics. I must say, but the reason why I bought it was because mm -hmm. uh, of this awesome action force advertisement. Now, this comic is falling apart, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off. I know it sounds bad, but I'm going to cut off, I'm going to frame it, and then I can sell it for cheap at toy shows. Somebody's going to want to put that on the wall because that's really cool. Got the SES guy there. Buy three and get one free. Is it Baron Red, Red Blood or something there? I do what is. Red German guy there. Um, yes, yeah, so that was part of the two pound deal. So that's like, that's really cool. And there was another one there. Um, combat picture library. Some of these books, these combat books like Commando and Picture Library and War Library, they can be worth quite a lot of money. If you get the um, Commando books, which were made in the fifth uh, in the early sixties, um, any under basically under fifty, number fifteen below, they can be worth hundreds. A number issue number one goes for a couple of hundred, I believe. And then some cool Mr. The A Team, Mr. T, there. Bugs in the box. I believe this would have come maybe with a cassette tape or maybe a vinyl. Then you would have read along to the record. Very cool. Um, these are all going to go on my stall, pretty cheap, Nothing. I, mean, you know, I only paid pound, £2 for the lot, so this could be pretty cheap as well. Um, Superman, another one, it says it book and recording, so I imagine it came with a tape. Um, yeah, so I've got Spider-Man, Wonder Woman at the bottom. I imagine it came with a record actually, because the record was sat in there I believe. Um, but yeah, very cool. And then finally, another one. This time it's the Batman with the fight in the Joker. It's called Stacked Cards, which is quite a fun little pun. The oh, artwork's very cool. Here he comes, hooray. Batman, you made it. You saved the picture. We've got a whole load of other ones you can get in the set. Most of those look to me a bit like Flintstones and other cheap kind of brands but for for two pound for that lot i was kind of happy i kind of picked up for the fun of it really um so it was i think it was free for a pound so that's one two three yeah three for a pound so that was two pound overall if my math skills are correct but that oh, that picture just amazing i haven't gone through the whole book yet so when i do i'll see if i could find anything else which i could save um and then went along and found this chap for 10p, um, one of the road warriors, is it Legion of Doom, is that they call themselves? Um, Animal, and I forget what everyone's called. But only the one, per, one, unfortunately, and I've had loads of these mini wrestling figures, and I've always had the same character, and never found any of the others, I don't think. But he was 10p, it was one of those annoying things where I don't re I take those of pound coins of me, and I don't have 10p on me, so I got to give the guy 50p for it, but I'd happy to do that. And, not take the change for that because I think that's a bit of fun. You, I hardly ever find wrestling figures nowadays and in the Bristol Cobb itself it's notoriously bad for finding any really good action figures. 
because for some reason um, it feels sometimes feels like there's more resellers than there is actually um, normal sellers. Um, the next lot went to a store. A woman had loads of Lego on her store. She's putting it out. It's in bags and bags. And I don't deal with Lego anymore because the market price has dropped on it dramatically. The only thing I would pick up would be box Lego, sealed stuff, or sets that I know are worth a lot of money. So stuff like the Indiana Jones sets and the Harry Potter sets and the Star Wars stuff. It's always worth money. It always kind of holds. But one thing I did pick up were was these base plates from her. And as I was picking them up, annoyingly, I said to the woman, how much do you want for them? She's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I'm thinking, oh, please, just give me a, a simple price. So she said three quid for the lot, which I was more than happy to do. Because if you, if you know anything about Lego, these base sets, especially these ones, can go for a lot of money. I once had uh, a set of six, and there's one, two, three, four, five here, and I sold them for £50 back in Lego's kind of like peak period about three years ago. Imagine with COVID, the Lego's probably gone up again. So um, yeah, I'm glad to pick it up for three pounds and it includes the grey one, which I'll be selling together. That's going to be an eBay sort of job. But knowingly, as I was paying, it, a woman came up to me and said, oh, there's a guy going around buying Lego up. Don't sell it to this chap, sell it to him. And I was like, I've just handed my money over. What? And um, the woman basically, um, the guy did come around and he basically offered her like three pounds for the whole table of Lego and there was must be about five bags filled and then you you know you're talking about maybe if she sold them all for three or four pound a bag then that's good but he wanted three pounds for the lot and I thought yeah he's just a normal um must lizard I'd say but aren't we all lizards so another stall and I really should have thought about this more and I really wish I got there earlier. I wish I was about two, three minutes early. It would have been much better. But a woman had basically, she pulled out onto a table a load of like train stuff and train stuff I know nothing about. But this is all like cheap stuff, modern stuff with no real detail to it. And then in the back of her truck, or like her um, people carrier, she had boxes and boxes, Star Wars, um, Phantom Menace, sealed stuff. So I pulled the box open and I realised it was all Phantom Menace watches, stationary sets, that sort of stuff. And it was cheap. Annoyingly, when I said to I was negotiating with her over the box, a guy just came in and started pulling everything out of the box. And just going, I'll buy this, I'll buy this. And then I couldn't do the deal, basically. I said to her, look, I was going to buy the whole box of you, but I'm not going to do it now if you sold it all whilst it's in my hands, sort of thing. Um, but what I did find in there, and I said to her, look, I'll give you a pound for it, is this. Jurassic Park, um, Diecast, Flossraptor, and Brachiosaurus. Now, I don't usually pick these up because they're usually always in poor condition, as you can tell, with lifting and stuff. They're always in really poor condition for some reason. Um, but people ask at toy shows, like £25, £30 for these, £15 for these, and they're not worth it. They're worth nothing, practically. Um, I picked this up just because I was thinking about maybe displaying these figures in my own collection. Um, I probably will take it to a toy fair and I'll probably just ask about free good for it. It's not worth um it's not worth a lot of money. I picked it up just for the fact that I love Jurassic Park. And I know somebody else will and it'll attract people to our store sort of thing when they see the Jurassic Park logo. But I'm I'm not gonna ask mega money for it because it is obviously in pretty poor condition. Only sell these if you can for fifteen to twenty pounds if they are in super mint condition with no scuffs, no marks, nothing at all. Because people aren't just not interested unfortunately. They're not like you know, the action figures where there's a much bigger audience. But still, uh, very cool for a pound. I looked in the box that the guy was that was in my hands as the guy was putting stuff out of it, uh, and I was I looked at it. I thought there's no Jurassic Park stuff, so that's I'm keep I'm keeping that. All the other bits in there were basically um, some broken train stuff, but a lot of like I said, Star Wars, Phantom Menace watches and stationary sets and those those really weird toys you press the button they slightly like swivel and she was offering them for like two pound three pound a pound if i had my like lots of money on me and i had a bit more um i don't say sense but i could have just bought the lot but the problem is these sort of things you sit them on your store at a toy show and for three pound for a watch brand new sealed 25 years old whatever it is and it never sells because nobody wants it so I thought myself, you know what, I'm not going to waste my money on buying stuff that's going to take six, seven months to shift. There's no point. 
especially if I'm only making small profit on it. And it's not something that's going to go into my personal collection. It's not something that any of my friends or other traders or dealers or sellers or collectors um, want in their collections. So I just didn't pick it up. It's one of those things where I kind of, I slightly regret it, but then in the other hand, I think, well, do you know what? I think it's probably a better business decision. But the last thing I did buy, and I was so glad I picked it up, <coughs> I've, this is the thing that actually got me collecting vintage toys, and it got me into basically, um, it's the first toy line that I started resetting parts from when I was picking them up in job lots. I walked to um, past my f my friend's parents' stall, and um, they usually have loads of good vintage type toys, but they know their prices. They're not stupid, and they never um, they um, their prices are just kind of like below, obviously below eBay, but they're um, they're not like car boot sale prices, even not. So I would I didn't really I never really bother. I just quickly glanced and walked away. As I came around for like the fourth time. And this is quite about maybe two hours into the day. I walked to the stall and in front of the stall, or on the front of the stall, was this chap. This is a vintage 1970s action man. Um, he's missing his hands, which I assume were gripping hands. So this places him around about 1973. He hasn't got the um, eagle eyes because that came out in 75. So he's probably made between 73 and 75, I'd say. Um, he's got a bit of a bullet hole in his stomach area if you will um, but he's in relatively good condition he's not got any cracks that i can see he's not he doesn't really feel twisted his arms are quite stiff um his face just needs a clean and his hair is a little bit gone but not too much he needs reproduction hands which i will buy up soon and replace them but he was seven pounds so i'm so glad to have him I'm not sure if I want to sell him or keep him in my collection. I rarely ever find Action Man out in the wild. The first Action Man I ever found was in the charity shop, and that's what set this off. I remember walking past it about half past five when the charity shop was closed, and he was sat in the window, this Action Man, and I, the next day I got up at like seven in the morning to wait outside for the woman to open the door, and as soon as she did, I walked straight in, her arm over, grabbed it, and was like, I need this. And she told me there was loads and loads in the day before, she had about 12 of them, and she said in them all for two pound each. And I was gutted, but I got one, and it spurred my um collecting basically. I wanted to try and get ones that my dad and my uncles had as kids. So whenever I do find them in the wild, I pick them up at like they're from places all the time. But when I find them like in a charity shop or in a um kibbutz, so I like to kind of like keep them myself, really clean them up, and you know give them a home. That's probably what I could do with this chap. I've got to try and think of an outfit to put on him. I might see if I can find a footballer outfit. Cool. Yeah, so that's one of my, my favourite finds that really made the day. I think before that it would have been pretty rubbish. Um, it would been a pretty poor day finding just a load of comic books and stuff. But, I, you know, I was happy with what I got. And, you know, finding some WWF, that's always good. Finding Jurassic Park is on card is... I never find it at Cubbit Sales unless there's a reseller. Who knows their stuff? So I was glad to find that. I mean, it's, only, it's not the best thing in the world to find, but I'm happy with it. And it's got the cool cards. So, yeah, something will be going in my collection. Some will be for sale at toy shows. Some will be for sale on eBay. And as always, I just want to say thank you much for watching. Um, thank you for like liking my videos. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you to the people that comment on my videos all the time. It, it does mean a lot to me, you know, I know a lot of people say that in their in their videos, but um, it helps build build this channel. And I really want this channel to be, you know, the best place to go for wanting vintage toys in the UK. If you are interested in buying, if you're interested in selling, if you're interested in collecting, I want to be able to um, kind of show you and guide you into what kind of things that I pick up and how, I, how well I do, really. So, yeah, I do appreciate it. every time you subscribe. I'm nearly near 1,000 subscribers and I'm desperate to try and get there just to see what happens when you get to 1k. Um, but as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay safe and happy hunting.